Hey everyone, uh, this is Katie Sweetman with Empowering Astrology and this is another live look at the astrology and this week it is July 20th to 26th, 2020. I think about it for a moment. I've been trying to like write my updates and I keep writing November and I think something's sort of wrong with my like my times, you know, my concept of time. But you know, it's we're living in strange times right now. So I don't know what does July feel like to you all? It doesn't feel like July to me, maybe. Um, but it's lovely to see you all to see to see some familiar favorites here that faces. See Sammy Joe is on the live chat. Um, let me know where you're where you are. Um, I always love to connect with people across the world. I know sometimes some of you in Australia wake up and get ready for your work day while you listen to me. And I know there's people in Europe and here also in the US. Um, just to also introduce myself, if you have not watched me before, I, again, am a psychic medium and astrologer here in Brooklyn, New York. And I use astrology as a tool for you to discover your higher purpose, your higher self, what is it that you came here to do? I am a holistic astrologer. So it is about, you know, the nuts and bolts of astrology. What's going to happen? What's the timeline that's unfolding? But it's after doing this professionally for 10 years, I realized that the more that we work on ourselves, the more that we take awareness of ourselves, that that changes how we interface with the astrology and not just the day-to-day -day, everyday astrology but also the astrology of our own you know when where the planets were when we were born um so i love working with people one-on-one -on -one. i know some people in the chat are also my clients so let's look at this week's astrology um, we start the week off with a Cancer new moon. And if you've been paying attention, you might be like, hmm, that's a little familiar. Didn't we have a Cancer new moon on J June 21st? And you would be correct. Um, this is the second back-to-back uh, -back Cancer new moon. It's not completely uncommon. Is it common? No, it's not. It's I can't remember the last time we have it. It's usually around the time, um, just because of I think things like short ascension or long ascension. I don't know, but we also had that new moon on the 21st of June at the very beginning of Cancer. So here we are, four weeks later, and the this new moon is at the very end of Cancer. So there is a sense that something that we began on June 21st, it's we're continuing it. We are having to renegotiate. We are needing to look at uh, some of the choices that we've made. You know, that new moon on June 21st was also a solar eclipse. It was a powerful new beginning. It said that the, over the next six months, because solar eclipses work in these sort of six month arcs of time, it said that we are going to be experiencing powerful new beginnings someplace in our life. And But because this is about cancer, cancer is the sign that has to do with home and family, roots, foundation, emotion emotional connection, the past, nostalgia, all those things, that th these are going to be themes or archetypes that weave their way through the coming four week or four or six months. See, I don't even know what time it is anymore. So this is something that's very important right now. We need a home and maybe home, there's a huge question mark about that right now. Maybe home is something that's very tied to, for better or for worse, the past family, maybe experiences that aren't so pleasant. So this might also be coming up as well. So how do we work on this? How do we heal this? Um, cancer is a sign that teaches us about the fundamentals of life. We need to be held. We need to be taken care of. We need to be nurtured, just like a plant, just like a child. If you do not do these things, bad things happen. But we, you know, we might be 40, we might be 20, we might be 80. We still need these things. So really prioritize self-care. I don't mean in some sort of internet meme self-care. I mean truly prioritize self-care. Prioritize your healing. Prioritize getting your needs met right now because it's going to be a huge story arc 
for the next six months. So here we are four weeks after that solar eclipse and it's another Cancer new moon. So something about the story has a part two. This is why I think that we should kind of be aware of what was going on the last four weeks. Now we had we were in eclipse season, so probably a lot happened, probably a lot shifted. Maybe even things dramatically shifted. That's what eclipses are supposed to do. And we have a cancer, another cancer new moon right now. And this one is making what's called an exact opposition to Saturn. Yes, your old friend Saturn, my old friend Saturn. I know you hear me talk a lot about Saturn. I'm sure you all are a bit sick of Saturn at the moment. I know, I'm so sorry. But one of the reasons why I love Saturn, I don't, I don't love Saturn. Nobody really loves Saturn. I just respect what Saturn's trying to do, meaning we all came here to do something meaning we came here to learn something work on something work on our karma heal something transform something and step into hopefully fingers crossed the highest potential of our chart yes there is a higher potential for your lives and you may spend your whole life trying to get into that or maybe it's it's easier or not i'm not sure but Saturn is the planet that's entrusted to make sure that we are sticking to the plan. It's like you sat in a boardroom before this life with your team and their bosses, and you're like, all right, this is what I want to learn. This is the curriculum that I'm, that I'm mapping out for myself. These are all the possible choices and decisions that I could, could possibly make in this lifetime. And here's where I'm gonna make things hard. And so Saturn's like, great, that's the plan. So you come into this life and then amnesia, because that's just how it works. And then you're like, oh, why is everything so hard? And Saturn's like, because you planned this. So this is your big check-in this week with Saturn. Saturn's like, okay, remember, there's a plan. And you're like, I forgot. And Saturn's like, all right, well, that's what you got me for. So Saturn is like, on our time, on our responsibilities, set goals, work towards those goals. If you are a bit stuck at the moment, how do you get unstuck? How do you get a bigger bird's eye view of everything? How do you go towards what maybe is what you should be going towards? Because sometimes when we're stuck, we keep trying to force something that's not really in alignment with us anymore. Maybe it was, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past, but not so much right now. Saturn wants discipline. I know that's not necessarily a fun word, but Saturn wants discipline. Saturn wants organization. Saturn wants commitment. Saturn wants us to work towards our goals. So this, for some people, not all, might be a bit of a reality check this week next week since you know this kind of energy will thread its way into the full moon two weeks from now and if it's a reality check that's that's a great thing because it means then you can start to do a different way do a different path make new choices make new choices that maybe saturn has been sitting or hinting at you know, for maybe this is the rare person who's watching and has been trying to maybe force something that shouldn't be forced or maybe something that's not above board. Saturn can sometimes show up as the cop. We do not want Saturn to show up like a cop. We want we work with Saturn like a life coach. So we know that Saturn's going to be very strong and the energies this lunar month. So I personally, maybe you feel differently, like to work with Saturn as a life coach. So set, what is the, where do you want to be at the end of 2020? Mind you, the variables might be completely different because, you know, 2020 is, is a bit bananas. Um, we do still have Mars and Aries. Mars is still giving us a lot of fuel and fire to get things done this week, this month, and for the next six or five months at this point um, although mars will go retrograde in september to november that is another conversation for another time um i'm going to quickly go through each of the 12 signs so you have a little refresher of what part of your life this new moon is taking uh taking place in um 
So if you were an Aries, this is about career. So how do you set, not career, wait, doing it the other way around. Um, this is about home and family. So this is a time when you need to really focus and prioritize on your roots, where you live, your living situation, your family, maybe even parents, uh, maybe even your own family, if you have children and, and a partner, etc. cetera. Um, you might be moving at this time. You might be making changes in the home, something that builds upon changes um, or choices or decisions that happened um, with the solar eclipse on June 21st. The reason I had career on the brain for you, uh, Aries, is because you that Saturn is sitting way up top in your career sign. So this is, you're sort of having to do this face off between where do you go? What are your ambitions? How do you, where do you direct your life versus the foundation of your life, the things and the people that are very important? How do you do that dance? You might be having to negotiate a lot of important things right now. Aries, um, moving on to what's after Aries? Oh, Taurus. <laughs> um, this is the part of your chart that talks about voice, how you communicate, how you listen, how you learn, the choices that you make. Um, Saturn for you right now is in the part of your chart that talks about faith truth, meaning belief. So maybe Saturn going back into the part of this chart has been a crisis of faith, a crisis of belief. What do you believe in? Um, maybe you need to get more information. Maybe you're still deciding which way to go. Maybe there's a sense of having to negotiate the things that you thought were true versus new ideas, new information. This is sort of the push and pull that's happening. And I should say for everybody, um, not just for Taurus, it's not just Saturn that's in this mix. It's Pluto, it's Jupiter. These are three planets that are hanging out in Capricorn. It's a bit of a heavy duty Titanic energy. So wherever Saturn is, it's sort of accompanied by uh, Pluto and Jupiter. So there is some uh, Titanic, you know, tectonic energy that's happening in that part. So for Taurus, it's uh, it's your faith, it's your beliefs, it's higher education, it's how you see the world, you know, Aries, it's about career, this is the kind of where the tectonic plates are shifting. Moving on to Gemini. So this is the part of your chart that talks about money, how you earn it, how you spend it, how you earn a living, uh, your salary, and also a sense of worth and value. And what do you what do you need materially during this time, especially this time of a lot of uncertainty? So this new moon does speak about money, new beginnings or changes in how you earn a living. Now Saturn, along with Pluto, along with Jupiter, has been hanging out in a part of your chart that talks about finance, assets, wealth, debt, benefits loans. So maybe this is a time when you're having to negotiate a lot of financial decisions. Saturn, etc. is also in a part of your chart that talks about facing the deepest parts of yourself. So a lot of deep emotions might come up. Am I safe? Am I safe to move forward? Do I have everything that I need? Intimacy, vulnerability. You know, Gemini, by the way, you are wrapping up a two and a half, three year story of needing to do a lot of deep emotional work, healing and transformation. So this kind of does hit at a tender spot for you, Gemini. So if you do feel like some uh, intense emotions are coming up at this time, um, it's just part of this transformation that you're this really profound uh, once in a 30 year transformation that you're going through right now. Um, cancer. Um, it's almost the end of your birthday season. So happy belated birthday. If it is your birthday today, other than happy birthday, um, you are stepping into a personal year that is all about performance powerful new beginnings, but also new beginnings where you need to sort of 
do your Saturn work, be the adult, set limits, set boundaries. Um, the Saturn work right now for you, Cancer, is in your relationship sign, you know, Pluto, etc. are also there too. So there needs to be some sort of titanic shift in how you connect with people, how you interact, how you socialize. Um, and if you have not been doing that quite well, this is where the Saturn comes in and demands accountability it demands balance but this could also for some people be a time when it's about serious relationship really focusing on partnership and the people that matter the most to you right now and i will say cancer because pluto is there too it's also a time when you need to stand up for yourself moving on to leo so this is the part of your chart that talks about some of the most quiet, spiritual, sacred parts of you. It's a time when you have needed to go deep within. Um, I call this part of your chart. It's if your chart is a house, this is that room that you go to to connect with God, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. But it's a very quiet room. It's a very sacred room. And so over the next four weeks, you need to really work on your spiritual health to uh, meditate, do some sort of meditative practice, some sort of spiritual practice, shedding the past, letting go, letting go of spiritual baggage, where Saturn, etc. are hanging out is in the part of your chart that talks about physical health. So how do you really look at your life from a holistic perspective? Meaning, if there's something that needs to be healed on a spiritual or an unconscious or deep emotional level, how is that showing up in your physical body? You know, is, is it somatizing? So how do you sort of do that dance of healing work? Saturn, etc. is in a part of your chart that really wants you to kind of get you know, eat your vegetables or get yourself clean or shed addictions or shed the things that aren't uh, working for you. It wants you to get organized. It wants you to get on a schedule, ritual, practice, diligence, duty, all these fun things. This is sort of where you're at right now, Leo. Um, moving on to Virgo. So this is the part of the chart that talks about Yes, just counting, just counting my signs out, just in case I'm not missing anything. Um, the part of your chart that deals with community, friendships, uh, society, these bigger questions of belonging, but also the future. What are you hoping and wishing for? So this is continues to be a time when you're very much uh, focusing on the bigger picture, focusing on society, social issues, social justice. How do you help? How do you serve? others um you know it's about your place in the world but then saturn etc is in the part of your chart that has been demanding over the last nearly three years that you take yourself seriously that you take your talent seriously do not forget that saturn will only be in this part of your chart as it will for everybody else until december 17th this is a time where over the next five months you have to get a very clear idea about who you are and why that is valuable and why there is nobody else like you on a planet of 8 billion people really searching and finding the essence of who you are and prioritizing your talents, prioritizing any sort of creative gifts and abilities. Um, moving on to Libra. So this is the part of your chart that talks about career. So you may have seen some new beginnings in your professional life over the last four weeks. Um, this could also include a, a change in status, a change in title. I know somebody was Libra Rising that became a mother for the first time. Becoming a mother is a change in title. You now have mother after your name. But how do you now go in a new direction? How do you does how does the world see you? in a new way. And this is a time where you might be changing jobs. There might be new professional opportunities or professional 
initiatives for all the sort of focus on the your worldly life right now saturn etc is now at the bottom of your chart you can't really neglect your home life your roots your foundations the past memories sometimes complicated past sometimes complicated memories and even complicated relationships with family members and so how does your foundation support your professional ambitions and if there's anything there that uh, like you know like problems with the wood or problems with the the masonry like how do you fix that because you want that your your professional life your worldly ambitions to be very rock solid well supported moving on to scorpio so this is the part of the chart that talks about faith truth wisdom foreign countries foreign travel long distance travel so this is a time when you might be having your bags packed well maybe in another in another parallel timeline where we get to travel you're going off on a long distance journey i was supposed to go to rome in august it's i'm, I'm a scorpio by the way it's not, not going to happen, probably. Um, but this is a time when you're thinking about foreign lands or long distance travel. It's time for seeking, exploring, searching for answers, expressing your convictions, expressing your faith, expressing your truth, um, even higher education. But where the tension lies right now, Saturn, etc., is in the part of your chart that talks about voice, communication, learning, choices, travel. So you need to sort of back up what you're putting out there into the world. You know, do you have the right information? Are you making the right choices? Are your convictions, is your faith sound? So that's sort of where the tension uh, and duality right now is happening. Um, moving on to Capricorn. So wait, I totally skipped over Sagittarius. Sagittarius, so this is the part of your chart that talks about really having to continue to focus on deep emotional work that you've been doing over the last four weeks. So this part of your chart, now we, we all, every sign has this part of our chart. It's the part that we have to go through at some point throughout the year or sometimes through an extended period of time where we sort of descend into the deepest parts of ourselves, the unknown, our fears, our insecurities, our shadow, our psyche, um, to confront our self-saboteur, our inner saboteur, our shadow. Um, it's ne a necessity. And so you might be sifting through a lot of deep emotions right now, Sagittarius, especially anything that has to do with the past, memories, family, or even old traumas. This is a time where you have to be very open and intimate and revealing. And it might f you might feel very raw because it's cancer. Cancer is a very sensitive and emotional sign. Saturn, etc., is in the part of your chart that talks about material need, stability, earth beneath your feet. Are you safe? Are you safe to do this work? That part, you know, where you know cancer is for you does also talk about finance, assets, loans, uh, debt, um, money from, from a partner, for example, or outside sources. So this might be a very financially focused next four weeks. And this is certainly a time to do financial planning if that's something that you have access to. Um, Capricorn. So this is the part of your chart that talks about relationships, your partnerships, how you connect with people one on one, how do you interact and socialize both on a basic level, but also with the people that are the most important in your life, whether it's a partner, whether it's a marriage, whether it's something else, you know, the, you know even like a live in partner, for example. So relationships are very important right now, maybe new relationships have been coming in with the eclipse that we had four weeks ago. Um, but where Saturn, etc., is, is in what's called your sign, your first house. And this is a next four weeks is where you have to really face yourself. It's not a lot enough that Saturn is back in Capricorn, meaning you, Capricorn, need to be uh, even more Capricorn. That 
bar is even higher, highly set for you, if that's proper English. Um, this is where you have to either get out of your way, Capricorn, or really focus on that sort of discipline and getting your life and organize, organized or where you, because Pluto is nearby, are getting in the way of making these new connections or, or doing relationship in the way that you need to be able to do relationships. So it's very much about you and other people over the next four weeks. Aquarius, almost to the end. So Aquarius, this is the part of your chart that talks about I totally lost my train of thought. Where is cancer for? Oh, yeah. It's the part of your chart that talks about health and wellness. And you. this is a continued time for you to really focus on your physical health. So getting your physical life in order, meaning sticking to a schedule, uh, going to the gym, if that's something that's available to you, or going for a walk. Um, you have to, of course, everybody has to take care of their physical body. So this is for you a continued push to do that, you know, get your physical life in order. Um, where the Saturn stuff is happening is in your unconscious. So if you're like, I should be doing this, I should be taking care of myself in a certain way, but there's something in your way, it could be something in your unconscious, something in your blind spot, it could be an addiction. Um, this is the part of your chart where where you are the sort of this this face off that's happening is like you got to face yourself you got to face anything that you are sort of holding on to that's just not serving you anymore that's actually creating negative health um, or some sort of negative relationship with your day-to-day -day life um, so this is where you might be having to do a lot of soul searching um, or letting go of anything from the past that is preventing you from having an optimal present moment or optimal health optimal work. Um, it's also time about work and projects. And then lastly, Pisces. Uh, this is the part of your chart that talks about continuing to focus on yourself, meaning your talents, your abilities, um, how you express yourself, your um, personality, persona, identity, you know, it's, it's a time for you to be you and to really uh, celebrate and share being you. I do know, by the way, Pisces, that you have Jupiter, your ruling planet, part of this kind of Saturn Pluto sandwich. So it's maybe not been the easiest, I don't know, past what, what month it is? it's past seven months or eight months, um, because you've been having to do a lot of transformation work right now. So whatever is coming up around friends, you know, really having to also look at the type of friends that you have, are they supportive of you? Do they recognize your talents? Do they support you or not? You know, also looking at the groups you're involved in, what's your relationship with society in the bigger picture. So you're sort of doing this dance around belonging and really needing to like honor yourself, but also the other, you know, having to negotiate other connections that you're involved in. So this is where today's Monday's new moon is taking place and how it's activating each of the 12 signs. And yes, we're all doing our Saturn work over the next week, next two weeks. So this means needing to kind of get real, a reality check, set goals, work towards a higher you know, goal that we've set for ourselves and, and to take responsibility. And if these are something that we've not quite been doing well, then uh, I'm sorry to have to inform you, Saturn doesn't quite like it when we're, you know, almost like a kid that's not doing its homework. That's where Saturn steps in and lets us know that we've overstepped our boundaries, that we have not um, done things in the right way. That said, we are leaving cancer season on July 22nd. Oh, before I do that, let me just quickly state where the new moon is going to be. It's already happened as I record this. It was at 1.33 p.m. New York. Um, it was 10.33 a.m. Los Angeles. This was also 6.33 p.m. London, 3.33 a.m. Sydney on July 21st, and 5.33 a.m. Auckland on July 21st. Did I say the 31st last time? Yeah, July 21st for, for Australia and New Zealand. Um, 
wanted to add that. I actually wrote it down because I never calculated it on the fly. But tomorrow on the 21st of July, I will also add that Mercury still in Cancer, it will still be in Cancer into August. Um, it's so much about these kind of touchy, heart heartfelt uh, conversations right now. But speaking of touchy, Mercury will square Chiron the third time in its series since June, early June. Um, so you might be having some emotionally charged or touchy conversations tomorrow, but these are conversations that might touch on something much deeper, something that is like you've been working on, like a pain point, a recurring pain point. So it's also a time for, to heal through conversations, to, to, to have healing conversations. And then on the 22nd, which I was starting to say a few moments ago, um, the sun goes into Leo. So yes, we are about to go into Leo season. So Leo season means that we are stepping into a season where it's about discovering who we are. Leo, as an archetype, is ruled by the sun. So the sun being this planet that we we have to see. It's very visible, especially during the daytime, provided that the clouds are not out. Um, so it's a time when we all need to focus on ourselves. And I mean this in the best possible way. To keep in mind that every sign in the zodiac has a positive side, a side that creates, and a side that nurtures, and also a side that does not create, can, can constrict, it can destroy. So I'm not picking on Leo when I say that there is one side of Leo that is more the self in a more self-centered way. So we need to also negotiate the shadow themes of Leo over the next four weeks. Hey, I'm a Scorpio. I know all about the shadow side of Scorpio. It is not very fun. But on the other side of Leo is childlike joy, passion, creativity, the essence of who we are. And it's this essence that we put into everything that we make, that we, whether it's the food that we make or the, the, even, you know, me doing this, it's a very kind of Leo archetype. I'm sharing my talents, my abilities with the world. I'm doing it in a way that is uniquely me. That's a very Leo archetype. So we all need to, over the next four weeks, so into August until what is it like the 22nd or so of August, if I'm doing my quick astrology math, we need to really search ourselves. What is it that makes us like, do we, do we prioritize our talents? You know, I always, I always say to clients, especially if they've got like a strong Leo archetype, that's in some cases, some people have things in their chart that they haven't stepped into. Um, this is where I come in as an astrologer. Um, and people, I'm like, you know, what's your relationship with your creativity? And people say to me, well, I don't do art. Well, here's the thing, creativity, it comes in a lot more forms than just art and music. It's anything that you create, including children. So this is a time when we have to really look, well, what is it that makes us us? Like, what are we creating? You know, are we creating anything? And it is so important to have passion. It is so important to have joy. When we do not have those things, our life <clears throat> kind of lacks something. It lacks that drive, it lacks that meaning and purpose. So we have to also, we'll say, tend to that internal flame. This is another thing that Leo season has us do. I mean, something that my spirit guide said to me, this was a couple of years ago, and we were having eclipses in Leo. My guide said to me, life's actually meant to be fun. I know that's kind of a funny thing to say, because I was really doing the Saturn talk earlier, which is not so much fun. But we still need, we need Saturn so we can create the container for fun, for passion, for joy, the grounding so that these things can happen. So that's Leo season in a nutshell. Um, so we'll be doing a lot of fire energy. I know Mars is still in Aries, so we're going to have a lot of 
fire, a lot of passion, a lot of maybe even sparks or tempers in the next uh, four weeks. Um, that pretty much takes us to the end of the week. And then we start another one, whole new astrology. And we will have to check in on that week next week. So in the meantime, that is your look at the astrology of July 20th to 26th, 2020. Um, again, my name is Katie Sweetman. You can find me on empoweringastrology.com, also on Facebook, Empowering Astrology, Instagram, if, if you're watching, by the way, on IGTV, thank you very much. Drop me a comment. I'm also on Spotify um, and YouTube. I'm also putting this on YouTube as well. Um, you can book a consultation with me. Go to empoweringastrology.com. You can also go to the show notes and also learn all about Saturn and why Saturn's an important planet in your chart. So thank you all for your continued support and your time and coming and joining me live or even watching the replay. But uh, until next week, we will look at more astrology. Take care until then.